All Americans, just like everyone else in the world, are facing an indiscriminate and powerful enemy. This invisible enemy is tough and it's smart and it's vicious. But true to form, the only thing uniting people in the U.S. is disagreeing on how to handle this threat. Trump and co. have a task force churning out daily briefings which people either love or hate, depends on who you ask. And the country split about 50-50 when it comes to the administration's overall handling of the outbreak. It will come as little surprise to many that those numbers fall pretty neatly along party lines. You know, while all the top brass in D.C. keep repeating that this is no time for politics and name-calling before doing just that. Lives are at stake. This is not a time for name-calling uh, or playing politics. I want to remind everyone here in our nation's capital, especially in Congress, that this is not the time for politics. Endless partisan investigations have already done extraordinary damage to our country in recent years. But clashes aren't confined to Capitol Hill. In New York City, the place hit hardest by the pandemic, doctors, nurses, and ordinary citizens have been protesting against Trump's policies. He's completely incompetent at his job. He tries to pretend like it's a 1980s boardroom, and it's not. You do not gamble with people's lives. That is morally bankrupt. All of these things have led to more deaths, more illnesses, more economic damage. If it wasn't for the Trump-Pence regime, it wouldn't be anywhere near this bad. So for many, the president's not done enough. But on the other side of that coin are the hundreds of people protesting in states like Nevada, Wisconsin, and Minnesota calling for an end to stay-at-home orders and giving Trump a gold star. The government has overstepped. We have rights. Uh, we have a personal responsibility for our health, and we don't need them to tell us how to do it. Life in a free country comes with pain. Losing our constitutional rights, and we are falling under a dictatorship, and that's not correct. Trump being Trump, he went ahead and tweeted out a rallying cry of liberation from lockdowns in a number of those states that had already seen protests. And that led to a slew of criticism that the president is fanning the flames of unrest in his own country, not that they needed any help. Trump defended himself, saying particular states had gone too far, and then threw in some comments about the Second Amendment for good measure because a gun debate was what this pandemic was really missing. But I think some things are too tough. And if you look at some of the states you just mentioned, it, it's too tough, not only relative to this, but what they've done in Virginia with respect to the Second Amendment is just a horrible thing. They did a horrible thing, the governor. And all that only further ruffled the feathers of a number of governors who were already pushing back against Trump. To have an American president to encourage people to violate the law I can't remember any time during my time in America where we have seen such a thing. This is a, such a schizophrenia. The president of the United States has the authority to do what the president has the authority to do, which is very powerful. He does not have total authority. His proclamation is that he would be king. That's what a king is. A king has total authority. That statement cannot stand. A tweet coming from our uh, president to liberate Virginia um, I would just simply say that uh, as the governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, uh, I, along with his staff, uh, is fighting a biological war. Uh, I do not have time to involve myself in Twitter wars. So everyone continues to become even more diehard in their opinions. Like, the government should be handling it, but without taking away our freedoms. There's not enough federal aid being sent to states that need it, but how dare you cut back on help to foreign countries? We should all stay inside, unless we don't want to. Send out free money, but not before Trump's name is on it. And then there's those carefree Floridians who couldn't care less about any of that, as long as they can finally hit the beach again. Which they did, in massive crowds, the second they were reopened. So much for social distancing, guys. It seems to have become political because of the contradiction. You know, anytime President Trump takes a certain course of action, the political left wants to uh, basically stand opposed to it, and that creates and festers, uh, you know, these sort of divisions in America. Well, I hope that it does in time uh, unite the nation. Um, it would be nice to finally see that, but unfortunately, I think uh, the United States is at a point right now because of there's so much uh, misdirection and so much bad information that's disseminated by the mainstream media that it's going to be next to impossible to ever really have a country that's united in that way. I think that the two-party system has really polarized uh, the country in terms of politics, 
and it's going to take a, uh, a long series of political moderates coming out and taking power before we ever really see a united political culture in America.